ideas shouldn't be bounded by geography. One of the things you learn very early on is that we are an independent publisher and we always will be. Whether it was evaluation, whether it was communication and media studies, we were able to take a long-term view thanks to the fact that we're an independent company and that still holds true today. Sage is proud and honored to be a leading independent publisher. Since 1965, we've been fostering scholarship and research. Our mission remains straightforward. Disseminate teaching and research on a global scale. We see a future where SAGE is active and influential when it comes to educating future generations of scholars. Sage is very, very proud to be one of the leading publishers in the world, one of the top 10 academic publishers in the world, and we are what we believe is the leading independent academic publisher in the world. We literally publish all over the globe, we distribute all over the globe, and we're very proud of what we've accomplished. One of the many things that distinguishes Sage in the marketplace is the fact that we welcome our international standing and subsequent growth in the industry. We believe that ideas shouldn't be limited by geography. When you take the legacy of our research methods publishing, what you see is that when you're doing statistical analysis, that's true whether you live in Canada, Peru or Jordan. Therefore, we actually are able to publish a lot of material that can actually create communities that go way beyond the original sources. Sarah's interest is in publishing for a purpose, and not publishing simply as a commercial business. Her commitment to social justice extends significantly beyond supporting solid publishing and includes direct involvement in many social causes as a philanthropist. This animating spirit is what makes SAGE so unique. One of the, the, the studies that, that I am, am proudest of having been participated in was when Paul Wellstone was senator of Minnesota. Paul was an avid reader and was very interested in in, in research, and his wife, Sheila Wellstone, was heavily involved in um, uh, battered women's shelters and in family violence. And at, at the time, we were doing a study of what happened to women coming out of, of um, battered women's shelter. There weren't very many of them. There weren't enough beds. Um, this is pre-cell phones and, and, and pre-internet. And um, what we found in following up women uh, who got to a shelter and how many times they had tried to get to a shelter was that a battered woman had one phone call in her. And she would call a shelter and get the number of a, of a shelter or call the United Way first call for help and get a number. And if she called and they said, we don't have a bed for you, she went back to her abuser. She didn't have any place else to go. As a result of that research, Sheila Wellstone connected all the battered women's shelters in Minnesota, first of all, so that with the premise that you never tell a woman there is not a bed. You tell her that we will find you a bed. Don't hang up the phone. And if there wasn't a bed, they created a fund that somebody would go in a taxi and pick that woman up and take her to a hotel until they had a bed for her. Wellstone put that into national legislation and created a network where the burden got taken away from the battered woman and placed on the system to protect her and her children. That came from an evaluation study. <laughs>